Pension Plans in Canada 2022, Detailed Explanation. In this post, I'm going to focus on pension plans in Canada 2022. I'm going to explain the different types of pension plans in Canada, when you can start receiving pensions and how you can qualify for the pension plans. I'll look at some of the biggest issues surrounding Canadian pension plans today. It's difficult to plan for something that's decades away while you're starting a new job or getting ready to retire. However, understanding what to expect might help you make the most of your Canadian retirement assets. Now, Pension Plans in Canada 2022 Without a doubt, Canada has a solid pension system. The Canada Pension Plan is well-funded. The Old Age Security Program provides a crucial source of income for seniors, and a guaranteed income supplement helps low-income seniors. These programs, however, are not without flaws. The CPP, for example, does not provide enough money for most individuals to live on once they retire. Furthermore, many Canadians rely on employer-provided pensions, which may or may not provide a secure retirement income. Now let's look at retirement today. Indiana, Canada, the average retirement age is 63. That's three years more than the average retirement age in the United States, which is 60, and four years less than the average retirement age in the United Kingdom, which is 67. The notion that you'll want to retire as soon as possible is likely outdated. Canadians are working longer and surviving longer than they have in the past. In fact, According to a 2018 TD Bank survey, one-third of Canadian workers intend to retire when they reach the age of 70. While you may assume they're being forced into it by their employers, it turns out that 43% of those polled said they're delaying retirement because they want to keep working, and another 13% said they're doing so because they need money due to health issues or other financial hardship. Now, let's look at defined benefit versus defined contribution. There are two types of retirement plans in Canada, Defined Benefit, DB, and Defined Contribution, DC, DC. A Defined Benefit Plan, DB Plan, assures an employee a certain level of income during retirement based on the number of years they worked for the company. One of two methods can be used to calculate this. Employees receive a specific amount each month based on characteristics such as age and pay in a formula-based method. A system that averages out your top five years' worth of earnings throughout the course of your career. Let's look at pension reform. The most likely approach to ensure the pension system's viability is to change it. Changes to the CPP, OAS, RRSPs, and TFSAs, as well as RRSPs and TFSAs, may be made. Many experts agree that pension reform must occur sooner rather than later but there is no agreement on whether CPP expansion and or adjustments are required. The federal government has declared its support for an extended CPP, but has not yet provided detailed specifics on how it would like this to be implemented. Nonetheless, it is likely that this pension plan will be included in the federal government's next budget statement in February 2020. No later than March 31st. The provincial governments have been less vociferous about their views on CPP expansion, at least publicly, but given how many people rely on these programs for retirement income security, most seem inclined to accept some form of change. The efficiency and effectiveness of Canada's pension system have been lauded. It does, however, have problems. Now a look at pension plan system in Canada efficiency. The pension plan system has been commended for its efficiency and efficacy in Canada's pension system. It does, however, have problems. 1. Effectiveness. Over their lifetime, the majority of persons who enroll in private plans, either via their job or on their own, receive more benefits than they pay it in payments. 2. Efficiency. The coverage ratio of Canada's pension system is one of the greatest in the world implying that a higher percentage of Canadians have access to pensions than in most other nations. This takes us to the four pension schemes in Canada 2022. The following are the four primary pension schemes in Canada. Tax-Free Savings Account, TFSA. Canada Pension Plan, CPP. Old Age Security, OAS. 
Registered Retirement Savings Plans RRSPs Tax-Free Savings Account TFSA TFSAs, Tax-Free Savings Accounts, are a fantastic method to put money aside for retirement. You can put your money into a TFSA, and because it's tax-free, you won't have to pay income tax on any of your investment earnings. Each year, the maximum money you can put into your TFSA is $6,000. If you're 55 or older by December 31st of the calendar year, you can contribute an additional $7,000 every year under the catch-up provision. You can invest in a variety of ways, including cash savings accounts with substantially higher interest rates than banks, mutual funds, corporate stocks and bonds, and GICs, Guaranteed Investment Certificates. Canada Pension Plan, CPP. This is a government-funded pension to which all Canadian citizens and residents over the age of 65 are required to contribute. Employers and employees both contribute to it, and it pays out benefits based on how much you put in while working. Working Canadians are required to participate in the Canada Pension Plan, CPP. It is supported by donations from both employers and employees, which are split equally. The CPP is a defined benefit pension plan because it provides benefits based on your contributions, the more money you put in, the more money you get out when you retire. The CPP is frequently referred to as a pay-as-you-go pension plan since it only pays out benefits when they are required rather than building up a separate fund or investing in bonds or equities. This means that younger workers may not receive much from their CPP if they did not contribute enough during their working years to recoup their contributions over time. Old Age Security, OAS This is a fixed monthly payment from the federal government that gives financial assistance after you retire if you're over 65. It's given to qualified Canadians who have resided in the country for at least 10 years after turning 18. If they're single or live with their spouse as common law partners, legally referred to as conjugal partners, they only require five years of residency. The amount you are paid is determined by your age at the time you begin receiving payments. The older you are, the more money you will receive each month, up to a maximum. It's not actually a pension plan, and it's funded by the government rather than an employer. To be eligible for OAS benefits, you must meet the following criteria. You must be at least 18 years old. After turning 18, you must have lived in Canada for at least 10 years. For at least 3 years out of the last 10, you must have received income from working in Canada, or from investments made with money obtained from working in Canada. Registered Retirement Savings Plan, RRSP A Registered Retirement Savings Plan, RRSP is a registered savings plan with the Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, that helps you save for retirement. With tax-free growth, tax-deductible donations, and other benefits, you can save more for retirement than you could with a non-registered investment account. Mutual funds, equities, and bonds are all examples of investments that can be held in an RRSP. An RRSP allows you to put money down for retirement by contributing a portion of your earnings before taxes are deducted. The CRA will register your RRSP on their files and assign you a tax-sheltered number for your filing purposes once you've set it up. Once you've set up an RRSP, you can make recurring contributions as well as one-time lump sum deposits at any point during the year or even once a year or once a lifetime. The quantity of money that counts as a valid donation is determined by whether or not you contribute on a regular basis or you're either making one-time lump sum payments or you're doing both. You can open an RRSP if you have earned income for the year in which you want to put money into your RRSP. Are 18 years old or older at the start of the tax year in which you want to contribute to your RRSP and a Canadian resident for the whole tax year, January 1st to December 31st. Even if you have no taxable income and don't have to pay taxes on your RRSP investments, for example, because they're registered in your spouse's name, file an income tax return for that year. Have a SIN, social insurance number, issued by Service Canada and keep it up to date with any changes of address or marital status during the year when contributions are made to this account type. Otherwise, 
the contributions will be considered invalid. An RRSP can be opened by anybody with earned income, which includes wages, revenue from a business or property, and some types of alimony or maintenance payments. You can take money out of your RRSP at any time, but you'll have to pay taxes on it. If you want to utilize the money for things like buying a house, paying for college or training, or supporting yourself while unemployed, you might choose to take some of your RRSP funds out. RRSPs are long-term savings vehicles that aid with retirement planning. An RDSP is a qualifying disability savings plan, unlike an RRSP, which is a tax-deferred investment. Both types of plans allow you to save for the future while reducing your taxable income. The primary distinction between an RRSP and an RDSP is whether they are funded with pre-tax or post-tax funds. For example, if you make $60,000 per year but only contribute $3,000 to your RRSP, the maximum amount allowed, your taxable income will be $57,000 rather than $60,000. This implies you will pay less tax over the course of the year. So, while both accounts allow you to save more money than if they didn't exist at all by lowering your taxable income before calculating other taxes such as CPP contributions, they do so in very different ways, owing to the fact that they are funded with pre-tax or post-tax dollars, respectively. A look at retirement savings balance limits. What is the maximum amount I can contribute to an RRSP in 2022? The maximum amount you can contribute to an RRSP is $29,210 in 2022. For the 2021 tax year, the RRSP contribution ceiling is 18% of earned income recorded on your tax return the previous year, up to a maximum of $27,830. The maximum RRSP contribution limit for the 2022 tax year would be $29,210. So, what is the maximum amount I can contribute per year to a TFSA? The maximum amount you can contribute per year to a TFSA is $6,000 in 2022. For 2015, the annual TFSA contribution maximum was $10,000. For the years 2016 through 2018, the yearly TFSA dollar limit was $5,500. For the years 2019 through 2022, the yearly TFSA contribution limit is $6,000. The annual capacity limit for TFSAs will be adjusted for inflation and rounded up to the nearest $500. Another question, what is the maximum amount you can contribute per year to a pension plan in 2022? The maximum amount you can contribute per year to a pension plan is $190,470 in 2022. Members can only contribute up to $190,470 in pensionable salary. That's the salary maximum imposed by plan rules for 2022, so your future benefit stays below the Federal Income Tax Act's limits. A look at RRSPs and TFSAs contributing to an RRSP which is a tax-deferred account, is also a good idea. You can put up to 18% of your earned income, up to $28,000 into your IRA, for a total of $26,230 per year. You may be eligible to contribute more than $26,230 each year if you are over 50 years old. An RRSP is a good choice if you want money that's easily available and still investable with no penalties or fees. As some TFSAs do, albeit they don't allow for compounding. I have a question. Do you plan to retire early? If you want to retire early, you should find out if taking money out of an RRSP may affect your eligibility for OAS or CPP benefits. It is determined by the amount of money in your account. 0 to 12,000 no effect. 12,000 to 44,050% reduction. $44,0000 plus ineligibility. Now the conclusion of this post. Canada's pension schemes will continue to adapt as the requirements of Canadians change. The planned pension reforms in Canada will have a wide range of implications for pensioners. Some people may be better off, while others may not. It's critical to be aware of these changes and how they might affect you. 
if you're thinking about retiring soon or just want some peace of mind, it's a good idea to get advice from a financial counselor. We hope this information is useful to you if you're trying to save for retirement in Canada.